I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Isn't that what we are all looking for? Is there anybody here that's not life in abundance? Not just more life, but abundant life, full life, the fullness of life. But so often, it seems that we define more life and abundant life with stuff. More money, more cars, more possessions, more sex, more friends on Facebooks. In fact, I just signed up for Facebook about four weeks ago, and I have 3,000 friends I didn't even know I had. <laughs> Our culture is unique. Watch any ad on TV. What does it do? It generally creates a sense of insufficiency in us, a sense of lack. And for our society to believe that we are insufficient is important for sales. It's important for the economy. But it says to us, you are not good enough. You are not worthy enough. You do not have enough. And so we have to possess the right iPad and the right iPhone. We have to have the right deodorant the right gym shoes, live in the right house, belong to the right country club, in order to be accepted, in order to belong, in order to be worthy, in order to be enough. But we find ourselves, because of that, out shopping again. And it, we look at our nation, we're a nation that is over-addicted. We are a nation that is over-medicated. We are a nation that is indebted more than any other nation in the world. And we are a nation that is overweight. All because we have been taught that we need more and more. In today's gospel, Jesus lays down his life to show us that God loves the whole world and no exceptions. And God does that wholeheartedly. And from the beginning of eternity, God has bent backwards in time even to the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, to show us absolutely how much He loves us and what He will do in order to express that love and to show that love and to help you to see and help me to see what the fullness of life is all about. We are God's children now. That's what the second reading said. We are God's children now. And we're called to share in that abundant life. We're called to share in the possibilities. We are called to turn a world that's upside down, right side up. And we're called to do that as God's people, as God's children, as God's beloved sons and daughters. But we need to do it with our whole heart. And we need to recognize that God has given us all that we need to do that. Each and every one of us. And all we're asked to do is to live with courage. But it takes courage to live our faith. Courage comes from the Latin word of heart. Our heart has to have courage. We have to have courage to live with all of our heart. 
within this world. It takes courage every day to love without any guarantees, to give without knowing that you're going to get anything back. Doesn't it? Every single day becomes a challenge to us. But the Lord is right there by our side. Our God is right there with us. And what the Lord says, both from the cross with his hands outstretched, and what our God says through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, the very incarnate Word of God, is that you are enough. You are enough. Now what we need to do today is we need to look at each other. And we need to be able to say to the person next to us, you are God's beloved. I'd like you to do that. <clears throat> Look to the person next to you. You are God's beloved. And to say, with all your heart, you are enough. You are enough. It takes courage, doesn't it? It takes courage to say that when we are the believers. Think of the courage that it takes for us to go out there and to say that. If we have difficulty saying it to those that we love and that we are next to, how difficult it is to say it out there. And yet it has to be said. We need to leave here today and we need to be able to go out there tomorrow and say to each person that we need, you are the beloved of God and you are.